don't think everybody know from passing money for him. Alex got me when I got just want to try and drink some water from it anyway. Uh, welcome to Passing Money Plan. Uh, you know the channel. It's all about financial literacy and things like that. And what we're trying to do is convey a message, giving you our tips and secrets on how to navigate the financial landscape. You know, you know the the story and the fear out there now as we head into a possible recession. Talk about strategies that I have used and techniques that Alex has used to. Find a way to navigate times where your income may be lower, lower income might be higher, but you need to cut costs to weather the storm. With all that being said, uh, today we're going to talk about one of the things, like I said, it's my pet peeve. And it's my pet peeve, not because, not because I want to choose the right word so I don't offend nobody because um, I'm a nice guy. <laughs> um, uh, but it's my pet peeve. Uh, the information that's being shared on a lot of social media that everything is easy, everything can be done. And today we're going to talk about uh, buying a rental property. And I know a lot of people see on social media, everybody's talking about, oh, I'm buying this house, I'm buying this house, I'm buying this house, I'm buying this rental. And the first thing you're thinking is, well, yeah, you're making this much money because you're making so much money on YouTube or this and that. So you have the extra funds to do it. So as y'all know, our channel was not that big. Uh, so we don't, our channel is not monetized, but we're still buying rental properties. And today we're going to talk to Alex about the rental property he just bought. And again, he bought the rental property with just hard work from his job, saving and investing his own personal money, no extra money from outside from paid sponsors or the YouTube algorithm. Now, before we go on, I'm not saying we don't eventually want to get paid by the YouTube algorithm. So please hit the subscribe and like button, you know, and join the community so we can keep pushing out the information. But we want to keep pushing out practical information that's applicable for anybody. You know, if you, you know, willing to do the work, if you're willing to bust your butt, be dedicated and to be focused for a period of time, this is the channel for you. But with all that being said, Alex. Welcome to the channel. That's Alex. He usually do the intro, so if it's crappy, blame him because he made me do it. <laughs> uh, uh, what all let me say? So, Alex, um, so you just got on a contract with the property in Georgia, right? Correct. As of the day we're making this video, yes. When this is released, you know it'll probably be done by now. But it'll be, it'll right. be done. It'll be be wrapped up, bow and everything. Uh so. With uh, with uh, with that going on, so so what process did you go through to get there? I mean, so you don't have to go into the actual physical numbers of what what you had to save, but just what steps in the process did you get to accumulate the money to do the deal? So, um, the me accumulating the the money was just sticking to the same rule my wife and I have done for years now is. Um, outside of our actual expenses, we don't spend much money unless we go on a trip one month or whatever. And even then we're very frugal, but, uh, <laughs> so, um, outside of the, <laughs> outside of what we spend per month, um, you know, it's fairly low. And what we do spend per month on just bills is about 30% roughly of our income. Um, so the remainder just gets saved and invested and I'm, and I keep tweaking how I want to save that, you know, what percentage do I want to put investing? What percentage do I want to put towards cash reserves and stuff like that? But in one form or another, it's getting saved or invested. And what I was doing was buying the S and P 500, having cash reserves, and then buying a specific dividend stock that I was also putting money into. And then money that I was making from um, like options and stuff, I was just keeping that within the account. But eventually getting to this though, I had to sell everything. So I've changed that method. But do you have another question before I go on a rabbit trail? Yeah, so, so and I'm, I'm not particularly sure because I know I've seen you listen sometimes, but I think I believe you found this on your own. Um, 
So what method, because everybody tell me, oh, there's no properties. There's no houses. There's nothing out there that you can get a good deal on. How did you find this property? What what this what processes did you go through to find this property? Okay, so that's a good question because in, in Florida I have like a good amount of contacts, I guess, of like people that uh, can move for work that like I work with them, and then basically if there's work opening up in one city, they're willing to move there, and I can look for a property there. And in that scenario, I look for like single families because I know I have a guaranteed tenant or whatever. Um, but in my listings in Florida, I'm looking at like multifamily or like especially if I go out source, I'm looking for multifamily. But nearby, I'm looking for single family. But I knew that in Georgia, single family homes on the southern border of Georgia were cheaper. So I just had the idea, well, if I have maybe enough cash for some of the properties I've seen to close on those, then I could probably put in a cash offer if I find a good enough single family home. And so I included single family in my searches on the southern border of Georgia. And I was looking at the lower priced homes and I, you know, I was looking for the lower priced homes that had tenants in them. And so then I found that's when I found this one. All right. So the next question everybody's going to have, why do you look for properties with tenants in them? So looking for them with tenants in them so that I have an automatic uh, income uh, coming in as soon as I close, instead of having to just buy the property and then hope it's good enough to get a tenant in there. And I was especially, I was looking for long-term tenants. So like the guy in this one was there for 16 years. So I knew that he was comfortable with living there. Um, you know, I don't want to buy a home that's cheap and then not know if someone is even going to like living there. So knowing that someone was already living here to begin with uh, was good. And then by the time he moves out or whatever, then from the income I'll be collecting, I can use that to uh, bring it up to market rents and go from there. So now I'm going to pepper you with questions just based off of your answers that I'm knowing the novice will say. All right. So you can buy this property tomorrow when the tenant move out. Then what you're going to do? If the tenant moves out, then it will have to be, and I, I will have to put money into rehabbing, not rehabbing, but remodeling it. But by doing that, I can bring it up to the market rates and get tenants from there. And it's the location it's at is close to a, is close to Valdosta, the one of the main, main cities as you enter into Florida or into Georgia. So I know that uh, it's, since it's closer to there, it has, a better chance of getting tenants and it's not out in the middle of the in the woods or something and another question that somebody who uh watched a couple of youtube videos might ask you is well usually when you see long term when you see in the listing that if there's a long-term tenant they're paying below market rates did you run into that situation yes the tenant was paying 250 a month um and i spoke with him about uh spoke with him before closing about raising the rents to 500 which is still under market but it makes the numbers work so now going to the sale price so now the list price on there was what forty five thousand. yeah forty five thousand. it was forty five thousand. so what was your game plan going into that situation knowing that you wanted to use a one percent rule you know the tenant was only paying 250 what game plan did you go to tackle that to, i guess you tried to get the price lower right right yeah so but i didn't want to low low ball him but i still want to make a disrespectful offer uh so i offered him thirty thousand. he counted at thirty two thousand five hundred. the 250 still cash flowed at like it was like seven percent with that which is not what i want but i knew that if i was going to raise the rents anyway then i could bring it up you know and it would be above that number so he counted with 32.5 i accepted it we went under contract um and then I spoke with the tenant myself a few days later. They The realtor gave me his number and I talked with him about raising rents. The guy already knew his rents, his rent was going to go up and raising it to 500 a month puts it over that 1% rule. And it's still 50% lower uh, than market rent, market rents in the area about at about 800 bucks roughly. So the guy knows that he still can't find a place for 500 a month 
And he even told me, he said, well, I don't know anywhere else. I'm going to find a place for 500. So. So what's your future game plan on eventually getting the prices up to market rent? Or do you plan on just leaving it where it's at? No. So I plan to bring them up for the first year. And I know the guy's income situation. He's living off of Social Security. But at the same time, I don't want to risk only collecting 500 a month per year. So I'll raise it incrementally. Um, knowing his income situation will probably be like 525 the following year and then, then 550, 575, something like that. But bringing the rents up either year. And I kind of had that idea from... Uh, watching a video on Dave Ramsey where he said it's a business transaction. There is no helping. There's no, Oh, thank you for staying here. It's this is I'm letting you live here and we have to make a business transaction. So whether it go up, whether the rents go up 15 bucks, 10 bucks, it has to go up. And so that's the, that's what I'm going to be doing is just bring it up incrementally. Okay. Now another question that I know somebody might ask. So, how do you know if this guy's paying five uh two fifty and then you're raising up to five hundred? How do you know what the market rents are in that area? Based off of what's the government website? Hudson is it? Hudson uh, or yeah, HUD go yeah, HUD dot go. HUD .gov. Yeah, so uh, it shows you the uh the market rents in the state and county that you select. And it'll show you basically one bedroom, two bedroom, three, four bedroom, what the rates are per a uh, bedroom. So on a two bedroom home, which is what this is, it was at seven seventy two a month in that county. And that's for twenty twenty three, correct? Twenty twenty three. The current year rent. Yeah, and then that website actually increases over time. Uh, for people that don't know, if you don't have access to the website, we'll put it down there in the description area. But another quick hack you can do is when you're on Zillow, Redfin, and you're looking for homes for sale, is instead of looking for a home for sale, so you find a home that you like, and then now switch it, you get that zip code, or you get that area, that radius that you're in, and then switch to homes for rent in that area. And then it'll give you an idea around what people are renting the houses for uh, that's just on the market, that's renting them to see where the the most likely projection of where that house will rent at in that area. It might not be at the top of the market. It might uh, not be at the below the market, but somewhere in the middle or to the higher upper end, especially with rent rates going up, you'll be in the money knowing what your numbers are before you go try to tackle the deal like that. Uh, last question. And they don't, they don't ask this one. Uh, so the guy's been in there 16 years. The rent, you're increasing the rent. So what are you going to do besides just saying, hey, this is the market rent and this guy needs to pay market rent? What are you going to do to the property to make it seem like he's getting value for the, the increased rent that he's paying? Uh, at closing, um, I actually have a the team that I use is actually going to go up there and fix like the foundation of the flooring. Um, and then over time, I want them to... Uh, like touch up the paint and fix some of the rotted wood on the outside, um, like replace it with stucco instead of wood that will rot over time, fix the toilet. So, but this will be over time as the rents are collected, not just like all at once. Okay. All right. Well, congratulations on the new property. Uh, let's hope it works out for you and we'll do this again on the next video. <laughs> all right. We'll see you guys in the next video. Like and subscribe, please.